Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From encounters in the dark to dog adoptions gone terribly wrong, here are 10 wolves that you won't believe actually exist. Number 10. Maned Wolves Is this a fox on stilts? Nope, it's a maned wolf. Some species are just a little different than what you picture an average wolf to look like. Of particular note are the maned wolves of South America. This beauty is pretty exotic. At first glance, you can see why maned wolves are so different from the rest of the wolf family. They look more like big foxes, but at 55 pounds, they are both bigger than your average fox and smaller than your average wolf. They are unusually tall, standing at 3.3 feet at the shoulder. Found in Paraguay, Uruguay, Bolivia, northern Argentina, and eastern Brazil, they are often seen in grasslands and savannas. While they usually have reddish-brown coats, some have a genetic mutation known as melanism and are all black from head to toe. Even though they are similar to domesticated dogs, this wolf is the only species that belongs to the genus Chrysocyon. In fact, they are pretty far removed from most other wolves that belong to the Canis genus. Its closest relative is the bush dog, another South American species. Most wolves that we are familiar with hang out in packs, but the maned wolf is mostly a loner. And while most wolves eat meat exclusively, these wolves eat meat and a lot of fruits and vegetables too. One of their favorite foods is actually the wolf apple, a fruit that outwardly resembles a green tomato with a fleshy, eggplant-like interior. It's possible that they evolved to have these super long legs to be able to reach fruit suspended high above the ground, out of the way of other herbivores like tapirs and armadillos, giving it a competitive edge. They are suffering from extreme loss of habitat and about 90% of the population lives in Brazil. There are believed to be just around 23,000 of these wolves remaining in the wild and hunting them is prohibited by law. Number 9. Maddie Wolves don't live terribly long. In the wild, they may only live for 6 to 8 years. However, in captivity, wolves are able to make it on average about 14 years. One special wolf lived past that. This wolf, known as Madad, or Maddie by her caretakers, broke that record and became the oldest wolf on Earth. Maddie and her brother made it to the Wolf Watch UK Wolf Rescue and Sanctuary when they were just over a week old and were fed with a bottle every other hour. They were rescued from a wildlife park that had reached its limit and were no longer able to keep them. The organization states on its website, our wolves normally arrive here as a consequence of dominance fights, zoo closures, or excess breeding. Without our help, many of these magnificent animals would have probably been euthanized. Tony Highway, who rescued the pair, said he never imagined how Maddie and her brother would affect his life so much and that it was a privilege to have shared in their lives. Maddie was always her own boss, but she was very social and loved meeting new people. She would hang out with humans for hours at a time, something highly unusual for your average wolf. And given that she had access to acres of wildlife at the sanctuary, it seems that Maddie was a happy wolf. Maddie made it to nearly 19 years old, making her the oldest wolf alive at one point in time. Sadly, Maddie died a few years ago, but she will never be forgotten by those whose lives she touched. If you would like to support the sanctuary, be sure to check out Wolf Watch UK. And now for number 8, but first I want to give a big shout out to Tiny Dancer and Deirdre H for supporting this channel. Couldn't do it without you. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explained family. Number 8. Yellowstone Wolf You're not too likely to see a wolf if you travel to Yellowstone. They are very good at hiding away from tourists. You're far more likely to see bison, which travel in herds numbering in the hundreds. However, the situation is a bit different during the winter, when the lakes freeze over and the local fauna hunker down. Plus, some wolves' coloring make them pop against the bright winter snow. Wolves were almost completely wiped out throughout most of the U.S. by the early 1900s, but in 1995, wild wolves were released in Yellowstone to try to help their numbers recover. January 12, 2020 was the 25th anniversary since wolves returned to Yellowstone, and it is an amazing success story. This was beautifully captured by photographer Siddharth Gandhi. While he was traveling one night through Lamar Valley in the winter of 2017, he happened upon a lone wolf crossing the road. He reported to Earth Touch News Network that he was driving back in the evening when the wolf appeared on the side of the edge of the road. He stopped his car and said it was an amazing experience to see a wild gray wolf so close. I was in awe. The wolf showed absolutely no fear while it walked from one side of the road to another, totally confident in the photographer's headlights. The wolf's dark color sharply distinguished it from the snowy background. Its coat even helped to identify it. It was a female named White Dot from the Prospect Peak pack that has 10 wolves total. 
Next time you're at Yellowstone, keep your ears open for the wolf's howl, or perhaps you'll even be lucky enough to see one. Number 7. Dire Wolves If you're a Game of Thrones fan, then you're in luck. The sigil of House Stark features a grey dire wolf, which is a smart, large type of wolf in the show's universe. However, given the show's fantastical nature, you might not have expected that dire wolves were actually a real species of wolf at one point in history. This prehistoric carnivore existed in the Americas during the last Ice Age, but went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Dire wolves roamed all the way from contemporary Canada to Bolivia. Scientists think that dire wolves could weigh up to 150 pounds, and were much larger and more muscular than the grey wolf. Dire wolves and grey wolves lived alongside one another during the Pleistocene epoch, along with saber-toothed cats. In 2011, paleontologists found evidence that the Clovis people may have begun the domestication process of the dire wolf. They went extinct long ago, so there's no chance of running into one in the wild now. But since 1988, the American Alsatian Breeders Association has been trying to breed something similar to a dire wolf, but they're about $3,000. They won't be wolves, but they'll be close. So if you're a die-hard GOT fan, this might be the pup for you. Number 6. Arctic Snow Wolf Pups While we all know that wolves are dangerous creatures that shouldn't be messed with, sometimes we just can't help ourselves, they're just so darn cute. An Arctic wolf pack at Knuthenborg Safari Park in Denmark grew by seven in the spring of 2016. Who would have thought that such spooky animals could be this adorable? The Arctic wolf comes from the Canadian Arctic archipelago. They are not too large, but their strong pack mentality helps them survive these harsh climates. Arctic wolves breed around once per year between January and March, and they generally have four to seven pups at a time. The pack communally watches over the pups until they have matured fully after 10 months and are able to hunt by themselves. They are said to be relatively unafraid of people, and the wolves on Ellesmere Island will come up to people in some areas. There aren't many people there to begin with, and there have been some aggressive encounters with scientists and a local weather station. Their main source of food is the musk ox, but not very much is known about the arctic wolf since they migrate during the winter, when everything is dark for 24 hours a day. But looking at these cute wolf pups, you wouldn't think that they'd grow up to be sharp and clever hunters. It seems like you'd be inclined to have one of them as your newest pet. Even though that isn't advisable given their nature, it's hard to ignore the cuteness factor of these pups. Number 5. Yuki As you know, everyone who watched Game of Thrones probably wanted one of those certified dire wolf good boys TM. However, that's a dangerous game. Even though the dire wolves are all gone, so-called wolf dogs or genetic mixes between wolves and dogs are still around, although due to their aggressive wolf-like behavior, it's not a great idea to own one. But they are definitely very pretty and very impressive. Just take a look at Yuki, a 5 foot 4 inch long 120 pound wolf dog that is pretty much a real life dire wolf. Yuki arrived at the Shy Wolf Animal Sanctuary when its owner noted some odd behavior and turned him into a shelter. The shelter called the Animal Sanctuary and they determined that Yuki was definitely a wolf dog. Because of this, they decided that Yuki would come and make the sanctuary his permanent home. Yuki is 87.5% grey wolf. 8.6% Siberian Husky, and 3.9% German Shepherd. Yuki mostly hangs out with Bella, a female wolf dog, and even though Yuki's way bigger, sanctuary officials say that Bella wears the pants in their relationship. Other than that, Yuki hangs out with shy wolf volunteers. Sadly, however, 12-year-old Yuki recently developed blood cancer. The officials at Shy Wolf are making sure to hang out with Yuki as much as they can, but Yuki is reportedly in high spirits. Number 4. Red Wolves there are many wolves that are heavily endangered and near extinction. For instance, there are only around 500 Ethiopian wolves left, and they are quite scattered. The Mexican gray wolf faces similar issues, although some have been released back into the wild. However, the red wolf is perhaps the most endangered wolf in the world. Red wolves have been fighting to keep their species alive for some time. National Geographic reports that since the 19th and 20th centuries, they have been hunted on a massive scale, and by 1960, only a small population remained in southwestern Louisiana and eastern Texas. The only place where you can find red wolves in the wild today is the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge in North Carolina. While they are being protected, they are not out of the woods yet. Around 10 red wolves have been hunted since 2012. 200 are in special captive facilities and only about 40 are in the wild. Wildlife organizations are trying to study the remaining wolves to see if they can maintain the biological diversity of the wolf population in order to help bring them back from the brink of extinction. Number 3. Mackenzie Valley Wolf There are some pretty big canines roaming the wild. 
Which wolf is the biggest and baddest? A few stand out, although all of them technically count as gray wolves. Your average tundra wolf clocks in at around 125 pounds. Significantly larger are the Eurasian wolves, which average out at 160 pounds. But in terms of the biggest wolves currently in the world, the Mackenzie Valley Wolf takes the cake, with an average weight of about 175 pounds, beating the Eurasian wolves by a solid 15 pounds. Also known as the Northwestern Wolf or the Canadian Timber Wolf, they have evolved to have bigger lungs and stronger limbs than other wolves, allowing them to live at high altitudes. These wolves are most often spotted in the Canadian Mackenzie River Valley from which they derive their name, although some hang out in Alaska. There are about 10,000 Mackenzies in the world right now, and the good news is their population seems to be stable. Number 2. Dog Adoption Gone Wrong Some people take to exotic pets pretty well. That's partly what makes shows like Tiger King so exciting. But given the dangers associated with owning tigers and the like, most of us are disinclined to owning such pets ourselves, and many times are prohibited by law. There is a reason that we have only been able to domesticate certain animals, and if you want a nice, calm, low-risk companion, we choose something cute and fluffy, like dogs. When an Arizona man saw a free puppy sign, he knocked on the door and immediately fell in love with the puppy's big eyes and perky ears. He took home his new dog, which he named Neo, right away. However, what happened as the puppy grew made him pretty nervous. Before long, this new dog was displaying some odd characteristics. In particular, Neo was kind of a nervous Nelly and was constantly vying for the attention of his owner. His owner had to go to work and school, so Neo was in the backyard a lot and kept getting out. His owner built a bigger fence, and he chewed his way through that and showed a lot of anxiety and extra energy. He'd run to hang out with the neighbor's dogs, but he would hide in their house and act strangely, so they took him to the Humane Society. As soon as the people at the Humane Society saw them, they knew it was not a dog. It was a wolf dog, just like Yuki was and it's illegal to own wolves in Arizona. Neo had to part ways with his new owner and was taken to the Wolf Connection, a wolf dog rescue center and sanctuary in California. They tried to keep him isolated at first, but he seemed to have a talent for getting out, as you know, and wanted to join the pack. He joined Maya, the alpha female in the local wolf pack. He's been howling with them ever since, and he's finally arrived where he was meant to be. Number 1. Yellowstone's Wolves Yellowstone National Park is a lovely place to visit. Containing the largest supervolcano in all of the Americas, it is also home to a wide diversity of scenery and wildlife. But that diversity didn't come about all on its own. In fact, we can thank a few of the wolves that were introduced into its ecosystem in 1995, at least in part for that state of affairs. In 1995, 14 wolves from Alberta, Canada were reintroduced into the national park, and then 17 other Canadian wolves were placed there in the following year. These wolves then successfully reproduced, forming packs around the rest of the park. With plenty of animals to hunt, these wolves got to work, trimming down the elk population and the bison population in turn. This reduction in elk led to what scientists call a trophic cascade where plant life flourished due to the lack of elk, triggering further positive ripple effects throughout the park's ecosystem. Some have lauded the wolves as saviors, but it is important to remember that this ecosystem is not completely restored, and the story is likely far more complicated than we might be led to believe. But the wolves did, without a doubt, influence this ecological development and help shape Yellowstone into the park that we know and love today. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up to let me know if you would like to see more videos like these. See you soon! Bye!